I'm Robin. And I'm Nick, guys. Nice How to you meet doing? you. I'm great. How are you? Good, 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 good. Any plans that you've got? Well, other than today, um, no, a bit of kiteboarding maybe. Who knows? Mm. We'll see. And you? Nice. No, I'm here with you and we're going to have an amazing time. We are definitely. So tell me, mm -hmm. are there any goals you have? Ooh, I'm not going to run from Cape Town to Cairo. How, how cool would that be? That'd be amazing. What do you want to do? Yo, I would love to do King of the Air Challenge. Jump 60 meters with a kite board and a kite. Uh, but the record for that is 34 meters. Yeah, but uh, look, I think I'm capable. I'm pretty really? sure it can be done. Yeah, definitely. Well, seeing is believing. And you know what? There are so many other people who, who feel that way about God, that they would have yeah. to see him to believe him. Yeah, that's true. Actually, it does require um, a bit of evidence to believe sometimes. And thankfully, there is evidence that we can refer to that actually supports who God is. And Jen is going to tell us all about that, the evidence that God is real. Is God real? Does he actually exist? Many people confronted with this question will simply say, I don't know, or maybe. Some might say, if a loving God existed, he would not allow bad things to happen to people. They would like God to give them everything they want and nothing they don't want. The God of the Bible who demands obedience to his commands doesn't appeal to them. They would rather say that God doesn't exist. What about you? Have you ever wondered if God actually exists? Or maybe thought, if I can't see or touch or hear him, is he real? People over the centuries have tried to deny that God exists, and they are called atheists, meaning no God. If you love God and have committed your life to Him, sooner or later, someone will ask you to prove to them that God exists before they will believe. When most people ask for evidence, they expect a scientific or mathematical proof. However, science is only able to study or comment on the natural world, while if God exists, he's supernatural, meaning he exists outside of the natural realm. The good news is, even if maths and science can't help us, there is still plenty of other evidence for the existence of God. Today, we will look at just three pieces of evidence. Most scientists and historians agree that our universe had a beginning. People who don't believe in a creator God would say that the universe happened by chance. The big problem with their argument is that everything that begins to exist needs something to cause that beginning. For something to cause the beginning of everything, the thing that caused it must already be there. So now your cause needs a cause too, and your beginning is no longer a beginning of everything. When most scientists talk about the universe coming from nothing, the nothing they talk about still has natural laws and matter and gases and heat. <laughs> That's not nothing. Their nothing is not really nothing at all. So a purely natural explanation for the beginning of the universe cannot give us a real creation from nothing or a first cause. On the other hand, this need for a first cause is a strong argument for the existence of God. A true first cause would need to be someone who is uncreated, who is able to exist outside of time, outside of space and outside of matter. Someone like that would be able to be the first cause of time, of space and of matter. That is exactly who the Bible says God is. Another piece of evidence for God is that the universe has an order and a way of working. If someone tries to tell you that our universe just happened by chance to be what it is, they are in fact saying that there is a chance that an experiment like this could work. To place all the parts from 500 watches, like this one, not digital, but with the ones with hours and minutes and second hands, into a container with an explosive device, which you then set off. All the parts of the watches are flung in different directions. What do you think will happen? What do you think the chances are that all the parts of each of the 500 watches will land up coming together to form a complete watch? Not only that, but every little wheel and screw in exactly the right place, all the watches working properly and showing the correct time. There's absolutely no chance of it happening itself. A watch has a designer 
who crafted it and put it together. If we hold just one of those watches in our hands, we can see that it didn't happen by chance. In the same way, the water cycle, which happens in the same way all the time, everywhere on Earth, could only exist by design. Water follows certain rules or laws. That means it freezes, boils, and evaporates at certain temperatures. Or another example of a law in nature is gravity. If I drop something on Earth, it will fall every time. <laughs> design is evidence for a designer. Someone designed these laws before time even existed. The Bible describes God as the one who designed and created the earth with his own hands. It describes a God who plans everything out before time began and then does it. It was not a random bunch of processes that caused the wonderful design we see around us. It's not a coincidence, it's evidence of the designer. One amazing piece of evidence for the existence of God is that he raised Jesus from the dead. Normally, when people die, they stay dead. But Jesus said that he was going to rise again. And after he was buried, that's exactly what he did. Many have tried to argue that the resurrection didn't happen as the Bible says it did. But the truth of it is that there is far more solid evidence for Jesus having risen from the dead than any judge or court would need to pass a verdict of true. So, if God really exists, why do so many people say they believe that he doesn't exist? The answer to that question is really quite simple. The Bible says that they forget on purpose. We find that in 2 Peter 3 verse 5. Why would they do that? Because if God created absolutely everything there is, it stands to reason that everything there is belongs to Him. And if everything, which includes me and you, belongs to Him and was made by Him, then I'm going to have to answer and you're going to have to answer for everything that we say and think and do. Wow, what an overwhelming amount of evidence. It's crazy. But yeah. you know what? Some people still don't believe. Yeah, and all this evidence points to the fact that God is real. But maybe they just don't want to believe. Yeah, but why would you not want to believe with this amount of stuff pointing you in your face? True, but maybe that's also why people don't want to talk about Jesus. Yeah, especially in conversations like this. They, take, they tend to steer away from it. And you know what? That's what our verse of the day is all about. John 14 verse 9 says, Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Oh, please, just say that again. That's John 14 verse 9. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. That was what Jesus said about himself. And basically, he's saying that he's God. Yeah, how incredible. And one of the other ways he proves this is by rising from the dead. So let's go to our word of the day, resurrection. We learned today that one of the best pieces of evidence for God being real is the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. But what does this word resurrection actually mean and where does it come from? Why don't we take a look? Resurrection comes from a Latin word, resurge, which to me sounds a bit more French when I say it. But what it means basically is to rise up again. And it has to do with something that's died away or disappeared for a while, but has now come back fully as it was. So if the resurrection of Jesus had not taken place, we would actually have no faith and our sins also could not be forgiven. And you know, some people have tried their best to prove that the resurrection of Jesus didn't happen. And it's actually quite clever from them because they knew that if they can disprove Jesus' resurrection, then Christianity like a house will just fall down. And one of these particular guys was an investigative journalist. And what that basically means is he was kind of like a detective and he set out to write a book that would disprove the resurrection. But you know what's funny? He did all his research, gathered all his information and what happened? He actually ended up becoming a Christian. He saw the facts were so overwhelming for Jesus' resurrection that he wrote a book about it. And it's called The Case for Christ. You can go look at it if you want. So resurrection, today's word of the day, proves to us, to you and me, that Jesus is God and that God is real. 
And as the only real God, we will all have to answer to him one day for our belief or our unbelief. Oh my hat, God must be real. Why do you say that? <laughs> well, he, he's risen from the dead. I know, he was dead for three days, three whole days and then rose again. Yes, which means he's alive right now. He's alive right now and we can have a relationship with him. Exactly, yeah. So we're gonna head over to Brett and he's gonna tell us more about having a relationship with Jesus. So as we've looked at the, the lesson today, um, our response should be wanting to worship God in that. And for my life, I've been a Christian for 36 years now, and one of the main reasons how I find God, the way I pray when I hear Him speaking is when I'm in the mountains. I love being outdoors. I love running in the mountains. I do this thing called trail running. And the higher the mountain, the deeper the valley, the more excited I get. But often when I'm in the middle of a run and I look around and I take stock of of where I am, I see how small I am, I see how big the mountains are, and then I think to myself, the God that I serve created all of this just by going, let it be. And in those moments, when I'm praying, I feel so close to Him, I hear His voice so clearly. And so the challenge for us today is, yes, God is real, and He wants to reveal Himself to you. And so wherever we are, whatever we're doing, it doesn't matter how young we are, what our language is, if we're looking for God, He's going to be found by us. And so I want to encourage you, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, look for God. And when you find Him, enjoy Him, celebrate Him, worship Him, and more than that, tell someone about the goodness of what God is doing in you. Isn't that fantastic? God is real, there is evidence of Him, and uh, He's alive. And we can worship Him all times throughout the day. So we're going to hand back to your leaders, and we'll see you again soon. Let's look for those moments.